Hi, we're going to play some Empyrean today. So this video is going to be targeted at people who haven't played the game before. So when you load it up, you're going to be faced with the screen. So we're just going to go start game and we're going to go single player. So let's do that. And then you come to this screen here. Now, scenario creative freedom gives you all sorts of options to play with. But we're just going to stick to the vanilla survival. So click on survival and it brings you to this screen. Now you've got start location options here. Now if you click through this, um, you've got the temperate planet, you've got options of an arid planet, swamp and snow, and then back to temperate again. Now the planet you want to uh, start with is temperate because um, arid, swamp and snow all throw various difficulties at you, which we probably don't want to have to deal with if you haven't played before. So temperate is definitely the way to go. So you'll see a planet name here and uh, it looks, it's likely to be different than this one. Uh, you can change the seed number here by just randomizing it and it puts you on a different planet. But as long as it's temperate, they're all much the same. In terms, well, they're all the same in terms of difficulty. It's just various cosmetic changes. So without further ado, let's press start and go. So this is where we always start in this cutscene with this capsule hurtling towards the Earth. We just have to wait for the crash. So after the crash we're faced with this screen and uh, emergency situation detected, um, protocol, blah blah, has been initialized. So now you have a choice, you can either go proceed or abort. If you press proceed it takes you, th you through a couple of chapters of the tutorial and into story mode which is actually recommended. It's pretty good. Um, the abort just takes you out of that and leaves you uh, to do what you really want to do. So I'm just going to press proceed and then what I'm going to do is short circuit the tutorial because I don't want to follow a few of the steps and I want to do things in a and we'll see how we do that in a second. How we do that in a second. So the text continues at the top. And you get another option to proceed at the bottom here, which we do. And then it tells us that we have an injury, which is... Uh, and it tells us to press tab. Injury detected dermal burn. Required medical treatment bandages. Resources, fibre and plant protein needed. But we don't have anything in our inventory at the moment. And there's our inventory right there, it's empty. So, device required for collecting fiber is survival tool, not available. And it tells us there's one on the ground. So what you can do here is just look around, and if you look around, you'll see a survival tool right there on the ground. I'm not going to pick it up. What I'm going to do instead is go tab, and it brings you to this, where you've got your, all your individual stats here. If you have any afflictions, it will show up right there, and there's our dermal burn. And then go to survival constructor, and I'm just going to make a survival tool. And this just stops all the steps of the... Um, tutorial happening so we won't get bothered by it but I'm also going to make a detector now neither of these two things here require any resources so I can do them straight off the bat all right but we need to fix this um, dermal burn so we need plant protein so we just look around the crash site now if you see these blue plants here that gives you plant protein and you press F just pick it up there's two right there you could also go to these plants if you see them they gives you two as well so it's either or now, in terms of, um, let's see, I'm just going to put this in the two slot. So there's our survival tool. I'm just going to put that in the one slot and equip it. Now, if you right mouse click here, it gives you three options, uh, defense mode, and it's a pretty good weapon. It'll certainly see you through the first few days of the game. Uh, salvage mode, that's for wreckage, but what you want for trees, bushes, and everything else is resource mode. So I'm going to put it on resource mode, go up to one of these bushes here, and just zap it. So top left you see 50 XP, 3 plant fibres. So if we now go tab and go back into our survival constructor, we now have everything we need to make a bandage. I'm just going to put this detector in our 6th slot just because habit. Alright, so the bandage goes into our output. Now what we can do is control and right mouse click and it uses it. Go back into stats, stats, and then our affliction is cleared. All right, so what we want to do, um, if you pick up any plant, I'm just going to pick up as much plant protein as I can see, but if you look in the top left there, you get 100 XP for every single plant you pick up. So what you want to do to level up as quickly as you can is just pick up every single plant you can see. But also just checking that we're back on resource mode. I'm going to hit this rock here because it's got these kind of turquoise markings because this is iron. I'm going to need a bit of iron to begin with. So I want to hit maybe three or four of these rocks or maybe a little few more. That gave, gave two iron ore. Let's hit this one. Three iron ore. Still picking up plants for the XP. 
And I'm looking for a level up very soon, which is going to happen as soon as I pick up a few more plants. Another three iron ore there. So there's our level up, level two reach. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go tab. Sorry, I'm going to go F3. Well, firstly, I'm just going to go tab because I want to go back to the survival constructor here. Now, I want to make this portable constructor here, but I can't because it's gated. And also this portable heater cooler here. I want to make one of those. This is actually optional because on the temperate planet, you don't really need it, but I'm going to make one anyway. Now, because it's gated, I need to hit F3. And it takes us to the tech tree. You've got all these heading, headings up here, but the one we want is miscellaneous. And that's the one I want. Actually, did I need a level up there? I'm not sure, but anyway, we got it. Okay, but I did need points, that's right. So um, this does require one point to unlock. You tend not to run out of points unless you do a lot of building, which we're not going to do. But anyway, let's unlock that portable constructor. Done. So now what we can do is tab and go back to our survival constructor. And we can, we've got eight iron ore, so this costs three. So I'm going to make two of them. You need more than one for sure. But um, I actually want to make three. Because what happens is uh, you spend the early part of the game dependent on biofuel. And uh, we'll get to make that later, but it ties up one of your constructors completely. So I want to make three for that reason. And as you see, it, see it takes a while. All right, so what we're going to do in the meantime is just keep... Uh, do I need more iron? I'm not sure. I'm just going to take this one just in case. All right, then I'm just going to keep picking up plants because I want to keep leveling up, and this is just the quickest way of doing it. There's more iron. I'll take it just in case. I don't think I need this. Again, just picking up plants. XP, XP, XP. There's more iron. Probably don't need it. Sometimes you get a lot more plants around than this. So the only ones we really need early on are, um, it's just plant protein. You get other plants, which we will need for to make meds later on, like herbal leaves. We're only gonna pick it now just for the XP. Um, we're probably not gonna use them. Now, one other thing, just checking we're in resource mode. You're gonna need a fair bit of wood because making biofuel takes a long time. So um, we're gonna want to start making that as soon as possible. As mentioned, it will tie up one of our uh, constructors. All right, I don't see a lot of plants to pick up around here, so what I'm going to do is um, all right, equip our detector and let's just ping it and see what's around us. So discover wreckage. That be you discover things when you get relatively close to them, but if we go M for map now, then it basically picks up everything the detector picked up. Now, these um, icons here are resources, as it tells you. Now, these with the question mark, they can either be wreckage. Um, you see that one we just discovered because we got close enough. Or it can be um, other things, like a spider's nest. If we just look around us, there might be a red one. Yeah, there's a red one. That's a spider's nest. So just pinging again first. So that one there uh, is a spider's nest and it's close to the resource so we don't really we can handle um, the spider's nest with the weapon we've got the survival tool is pretty handy but we don't really need to go there for any reason so we'll just avoid it if we can now if you look at this resource here we what we want to do in the first day is hit up one iron resource one silicon and one copper and that's going to give us all of the resources we need to go into day two and start making weapons um, armor and all sorts of other things so I just need to keep pinging to keep the things on the map. Now, this resource here, um, this is Talon territory, the area that's shaded green. Now, if you hit this icon up here with the factions, we haven't discovered them yet. As soon as you run into a pack of them, then they'll show up here and it'll tell you that we are neutral with them. So they're not enemies and it'll tell you what reputation points we've got. Now, the thing about this resource here is after you've discovered the Talon, if you then mine this resource, you're going to lose reputation points. If you mine that resource before discovering them, you don't lose reputation points. So what you want to do is kind of try and sneak into their territory without discovering them and uh, try and mine before you bump into them, any of them. If you bump into them, as mentioned, um, we're neutral, so we are not going to end up fighting, but then you start losing uh, reputation points. Now these without marking, that's just general stone. We're going to need a lot of that in the next few days, but uh, not right now. 
So, um, yeah, those dinosaurs aren't aggressive. Most dinosaurs aren't. There are one or two that can be. So I'll mention if we just run into any of those later on. Again, just XP, XP, XP with the plants. All right. So just pinging again, there is only one of these um, things that we want to discover, and that's something called the large wreckage. We'll go to this one, the damage comm section on day two, because that, we're going to set up a temporary base there, but that's not till tomorrow. So we want to find the large um, wreckage. Now, it's not that one because it is actually labeled large wreckage. The way it works is it's usually out by itself and it's the one furthest away from the escape pod. Now this one isn't furthest away but it's out by himself and I'm guessing that that is the one. So we need to turn left and head this way. So just picking up plants we just hit level 3. So what I'm going to do is go F3 again and go to miscellaneous again and then unlock this portable heater cooler. Done. Go back to my survival constructor. Uh, these have been, now been made. I'm just going to put them down here. Put this over there. And uh, I want to make a portable heater cooler. So let's get that going. It's really cheap to make. As I said, it's it's only one iron ore. All right, so let's um, just ping and head over to this thing over here. I think it was in this direction, wasn't it? I think it's slightly to the left of that. Yep, this way. Yeah, so you can ignore these guys as long as you don't shoot them. Well, I think even if you shoot them, they just run away. So this is likely to be the large wreckage that we're going to see. So the wreckage I tend to ignore. You do get chests in each uh, wreckage. Uh, they could be above ground. Yeah, that's the large one. They can be above ground or below ground. Uh, if it's above ground, there's nothing really too valuable in the chests, in the cargo boxes that you find. So this is really the only one that um, I tend to visit just because it's got a, a bunch more stuff than the others. So you tend to get these like crab-like creatures. Um, so I'm going to equip the survival tool, go into defense mode here. I don't know if it's going to have them or not, but they tend to come in groups of five. You can handle them very, very easily with the uh, survival, well, survival tool when it's on weapon. Not seeing any. Oh, we don't mind meeting them because uh, we get to kill all of them. Yeah, this is the large wreckage. Because we get to kill all of them and uh, it gives us 320 XP for every single one we kill. Nope, we're not seeing any. Because when they attack you, uh, they tend to line up and all you have to do is walk backwards and just zap them. And then they don't touch you. Alright, so um, let's get up here. So the reason we want to go to the large wreckage is to find these uh, three adjoined closets here because it has a bunch of stuff in which includes a motorbike. So we can take all the resources by clicking here, but we'll tend to use a lot of this stuff to build a weapon and armor on day two. All right, so that's the Talon over there, and they're the guys we want to try and avoid discovering. As I said, we're friendly with them, but um, I don't think we discovered them. It'll say here if we do. No, we didn't. All right, so anyway, let's uh, just ping the detector because what we want to do now is go mining. So it tells us where the resources is. Just M for map again. So this one... Yeah, let's try and go over there and see what that one is. 342. Yeah, as, long as, as soon as you get close enough to these guys, you discover them, and uh, as soon as we do that, then we're going to take a reputation hit for mining this resource because it's in their territory. We can avoid that by um, not bumping into them as rock again. But I do need, um, back into resource mode, I do need some more wood before we settle down into the mining. Because all we want to do to round out the first day now is just um, start mining. And as mentioned, we want to hit three uh, mining nodes, and that's one iron, one silicon, one copper. We don't know what they are until we get closer to them, but we'll find out which one this is in a minute. And because we we want one of each, I don't really care what this one is right now. But I do need a bit more wood. 30 is probably enough, so let's go with that. So I'm still picking up plants. Now this is copper here, but we don't, well, I'm not gonna pick it up because uh, we're about to go into mining mode and we're going to get all of the um, resources we need to proceed into day two from that. 
So the mine is just there. So you see these dinosaurs roaming around. They are not dangerous. You can just... They'll ignore you if you ignore them. Alright, so I think we got to this one without discovering Talon. Which is good, which means we can mine without losing... Um, so let's go into resource mode. There we go. So I think we need to ping again. So yeah, we're close to a start spider's nest. It's, um, where is it going? Oh, there it is. Alright, 25.9. So what we're going to do with each of the mines is we're just going to cut a uh, slope down. Actually, before I do this, just go into tab and um, I'm going to make some energy bars. Now, if you left mouse click, it gives you one. If you shift left mouse click, it adds 10. If you go control left mouse click, it adds 100. So as soon as we run out of resources, uh, this, will, this will clear itself anyway. So I'm just going to leave it there and keep digging. All right, so there's a nice slope. Um, so now what I'm going to do is just going to cut a little room to the side here. Those explorer tokens, um, you don't get to use those till later in the game, so you can pretty much ignore them at this stage. You get one for every locate, every planet you go to, and also one for every new resource you discover. Alright, so this is where I'm going to mine from. Now we're pretty close to a spider's nest. Now the spiders can path down here and attack. Um, not so often because you're harder to detect down here, but their pathing can also get a bit messed up sometimes, which um, helps protect us at least. So this is copper, and so what we're going to do with each of the three mines, the copper, the iron, and the silicon, is um, we're going to put down our, let me see, we're going to put down our portable heater cooler. Now if you just go tab, and into stats, it gives you your comfort zone here, 15 to 35. On the temperate planet, you don't get extremes, but it can go below 15 at night time. So we're gonna put this down. If you stand next to it, it keeps you at a nice comfortable 25, as long as we don't get a temperature extreme like uh, plus 80, 90 C, or minus hundreds. But we don't get that on the temperate planet. Now we also made these portable constructors, so let's put those down. So one, two, three, Let's get one going on biofuel immediately. Now you need uh, plant fibers and uh, wood will convert into plant fibers. So again, I'm just going to put way more than we can make. But you see how slow it does, slow this works, because um, you first have to make the plant fibers out of the wood. We'll get 20 out of each piece of wood. And then the plant fibers are converted into biofuel. And you see how slow this is. So you need to keep this working full time, which is why we needed more than one uh, portable constructor. Once we get ores, we're going to want to be using these to convert iron, copper, silicon. Uh, but we don't have any ores yet. Okay, so the way that we are going to mine is we're just going to stand here. And we're going to press F5. And this activates a drone. Very often it'll say there is another object in the spawn area. So you just got to jig around, which is what we'll do until we can spawn the drone. Can't do it there. And do it there. So this is normal. There we go. All right, so now we were able to activate the uh, drone. Be careful because you can knock yourself forward with the drone. And now we can uh, go mining. Now, one thing I haven't done yet is start eating because if you look at our stats in the bottom left there, then we are pretty far off of our maximum health of 500. Uh, we're also pretty hungry. This is... Um, stamina and this is oxygen which we don't have to manage on this planet because we can it's breathable so what we're going to do is we made some food earlier on so we're going to go into here and go shift right click and start eating so this each of these adds 45 food so just a note on the energy bars it says perish time 90 there now if you leave them in the output here the perish timer does not start clicking down so that will stay at 90 and last forever if you move it over to your infantry then that perish timer will start counting down. So we're going to leave all the food here, but anyway, let's keep eating. 
So 252, you've got a bit of a cool down after each meal, so it takes a little bit of time to get all the way up. But let's do this. 386. 431. 475. Now as soon as you go over 450, then you're going to get a message up here saying you feel very comfortable and satisfied. But what that means is that you start to gain health. So what we want to do is we want to keep our hunger bar over 450 while we're doing all our mining. And um, that will mean that our health will click up to the maximum. And we're going to find way more food than we need. So we can just um, make sure we're at 500 before we start the mining. So let's do that. Okay, we're in drone mode. Uh, we can change weapons or whatever. So let's go one, go into resource mode. And there's the copper down there. So let's keep going. So just checking with Tab, uh, we haven't discovered the talent yet, so we are not going to get reputation loss for doing this mining. Now, if you have discovered the talent, and um, let's just go to M, and you end up having to mine a couple of small mines here, even if you have discovered them, you can absorb the rep reputation loss without too much problem. So it's not really such a big issue. So this is the copper here. And it's small, so we'll probably get about two, three hundred copper ore out of this, and then we'll be able to convert that into um, five hundred or so um, ingots. All right, so just unequipping the um, drone again. So that's pretty much it for the first day, because um, if you look in the top right there, you've got this clear gr grassland and a picture of a sun with an arrow pointing down. Now that tells us that uh, in one hour, forty-nine minutes, forty-eight now. Uh, it's going to be the sun's going to go down and at night time that arrow points up and it tells you when the um, sun's going to come up so what we're going to do now is just pinging again so we're going to exhaust this mine here and uh, then we're going to go over to these three here and uh, find out which one's iron which one's silicon and by the time we finish mining uh, an iron one and a silicon one it's going to be just about sun up um, and then we'll be ready for day two and that's when I'll start the next episode after I finish the last mine So anyway, I'm going to stop here. Just uh, do that mining during the night and um, Thanks for watching. And I hope to see you on day two